Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. And uh, they didn't break or chip any of the the flutes, and it's still good. And you can see here, after I bore this out and and uh, braze it up and then rebore it, then I set it up and I actually turn these outside diameters here for the wear rings, and then I roll a stainless ring bore that ring and then heat shrink it right on there and then finish turning that diameter and you can see you know those the two wear ring diameters are in excellent condition and you can see here I mean that is razor thin um, it you know it wouldn't take nothing to, to actually break that up I mean that's paper thin right there so that's the reason why I'm not uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and force this to run again uh, it's a good spare if they happen to lose one and we need to make the quick turnaround real quick and get him back in the water so he's not losing days um, until he can hit a yard period or whatever um, you know we, we we'll keep this on hand uh, we can throw it in there and we know that we can get we can get a week out of it or whatever um, so anyway we're gonna start boring on this on this impeller here and that's kind of why we're why we're doing that you can see the braze there almost out to the depth of the keyway and then I just rebroach it and this also this shoulder sticks out proud right here and really that little tiny face that little register against that little register right there this is a stainless steel sleeve that goes over it and it gets an o-ring in here but that o-ring doesn't or excuse me it gets an o-ring back here but the salt water can get underneath there once that little tiny pressured area right there gives way, the impeller starts walking and and if you have rust and corrosion, it causes it to fatigue and fail prematurely. And prematurely means anything less than the max so far. The one he's got in service right now is going past a year. This one here lasted just slightly past a year. No. Oh. We don't know how this got broke, whether it got broken shipping or uh, thrown around in the back of his uh, truck by uh, a crew member or whatever, but I do know that we need to pay attention to that. So while I'm brazing this bore and we have all the heat in here, I'm going to grind prep that. We're going to get this tweaked back out. We'll braze that up and we'll get this repaired as well. While we're boring out that uh, impeller there, we're going to be playing around. i got to set this up in the drill press and put in four holes here to hold it to the face plate. And then we're going to be pulling the gap out of this lathe here and putting the face plate on for the first time, I'll show you guys. Um, we're going to get this sprocket in here. Now we're going to go through a section there and I'm going to grind a tree panning tool. We're going to plunge cut in halfway from one side flip the part over, plunge in the other side, and be cutting out the center section. All right, there's, <clears throat> there's our finished bore. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go in the other room and we're gonna start setting up. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna kiss this a little bit on the side here. Just because this gets that little protrusion of about a hundred thousand sticking out on the back side here. I really want to make sure that I got a good good bond there. It's kind of the whole key secret of the totally eliminating all the corrosion on the hub of the, the impeller makes the steel shaft last that much longer. We do another couple tricks to that shaft and we'll show you that on assembly. Alright, so we're going to get this out. We're going to get our mess cleaned up here because we are going to pull a gap. We're going to put in the face plate and we have another big job. We're going to kind of be running two jobs together. This pump and uh, a winch uh, drive, a, a sprocket drive for a winch on an antique crane. And, uh, so we're going to go back and forth. Alright, before we get uh, all involved with bringing the heat in and start brazing up the center bore, uh, we're going to go ahead and take the rotary burr and we're going to get down in this groove here and get it 
freed up uh, and prepped and then we're going to get a steel plate underneath here and we're going to get it bent back up into shape and have it ready to do a braze repair after we get done with the center bore so we want to do all the prep work before we get the heat and then it'll be ready for maintaining the heat and and it'd be nice and uniform and with it really warmed up that much this this repair will be at optimum as far as prep prep wise and the heat control and and uh, standing the best chance of actually having a good repair here. So we're reaching all the way back here where we can see the crack and coming all the way back here. All right, first I'm gonna try a pinch bar in here just to see, I want to see what it takes as far as leverage going up, what it takes to bend this, and uh, I think uh, I can get this flexed up a little bit like that. See what I mean about brittle? All right. I'm going to grab that with a little pair of pliers. Let them in here and get the chunks out. We can fill that in with braids. All right, we're gonna take the rotary burr a little bit more, and then I think we're gonna put a piece of steel in here and we're gonna clamp it down. All right, we got this uh, the half inch ball there. We got a good groove. We're gonna put a. We're going to put a hole through here, around that out. We think that that's pretty close to the end of the crack there, and we don't want it to travel any farther this way here. So we got a pretty good relief in there. All right, now we're going to, we're going to go ahead and change out our burr to a little bit narrower one, and we're going to follow that crack right in there. We're going to get, we're going to get down there as much as possible because we want 100% penetration. We're only going to be able to get to it from one side. All right, so this is just going to sharpen it, that's all. All right, let's get a heat blanket on around here. And uh, you can see we got get a view in on this, this side here anyway. We've got this bent out where we're comfortable with it. And we'll be able to put a ceramic uh, or a, a, a carbon plate behind here uh, to, to dam up this section right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll braze this in. We've got a hole down here so it won't travel any farther in here. Uh, but we're going to blanket this thing all the way around the outside. And the reason why we do that is because we're going we're gonna to warm this up and create the brazing temperature we want. And we don't want the heat to dissipate and uh, just venture on up. So we're going ahead and we're wrapping our opening all the way up here. All right, we'll go ahead and get some wire on here. All right, the flux I'm using is Peterson's number two high heat, and it's a grayish black powdered flux. All right, I, I've been asked uh, quite a few times when I am brazing what flux I use, and when I'm brazing cast iron, I use the high heat flux. Now, if I'm building up an area, and once I got my high heat uh, uh, bonding on the uh, bore itself, uh, I may switch over to uh, a number one flux of, uh, of Peterson's uh, uh, white brazing or blue. It's a bluish color. Um, sometimes it's white, uh, depending on if it's borax white, uh, number one. Uh, but Peterson's is, uh, is a bluish color. All right, we're going to go ahead and throw in a, a preheat here now. This will probably take a while.
can't be in a hurry when you when you're preheating and getting things up. And I can tell by the the color and the uh, the swirl around where my torch area is. I can see the shadows casting, and that's kind of typical of when cast is getting uh, up the temperature. And the smoke and everything else, uh, the, the grease and oil on my four jaw stuff, and, and the paint, the, the residue of paint on the on the pulley or the uh, impeller itself, giving off a little bit of smoke. I got my doors wide open. You don't want to be breathing in but uh, and my uh, my ventilation on the wall is drawn from the other side. I'm pretty well open there, and I'm nice and cool. This is going to be a hot job, and it's going to go for a while. Okay, I'm going to slow down my rotation. Nothing worse than uh, accidentally going too far past your rotation there. All right. Now, get my uh, brazing rod coated with blood. And then I get it rolling in here. Stands off on the outside here. 